Hello, my dear friends. Today we are going to make a beautiful cake with a cap of chrysanthemums. We've got a naked cake here. I have nothing else here but an absolutely naked cake, some piping tips and entire meringue cream. We need to cover the cake as soon as possible while the frosting is still hot. It's soft and pliable now, so it won't leave a lot of ripples. I made a crumb coat to seal in all the cramps. I'm not sure I have enough cream, so I will cover the top carefully with this white frosting. In case we don't have enough frosting to make a cap of flowers, we need to have a nice even surface on top. I'm making a nice even white top so that we had a beautiful surface showing through the flowers. I'm removing the crown that has formed here on top. On other cakes you may keep the crown and cover it with gold instead. I put some white frosting into a piping bag and color the rest of the frosting with copper powder. I add just a little powder at first, because I want to make a graduation from light to darker color. I put the frosting into the piping bag. It's partially covered with white frosting, but we will see it on the side. First we'll make a row of white scales. We put scale after scale, they look like little rainbows. You can see these rainbows longer if their tails stick out too much. You can make this decoration in different ways. You can either press the piping tip against the cake the way I'm doing now. Or you can move the upper part of the piping tip away from the cake and make these scales high volume, as if they are opening. But keep in mind that this will have a visual impact on the volume of the cake. We are getting a smooth transition of colors. We still have white frosting left in the back, which helps us make a very smooth and soft color transition. We finished the second row of pale brown color. Now we need to make a richer and darker tint. I pipe some of the frosting back into the bowl in order not to waste it. I removed some of the light brown frosting. I must have some darker tint left in the back so I can make another row with it. I add some cocoa powder into this frosting. I use a fine mesh strainer because cocoa powder tends to form lumps, which are difficult to break in the frosting. We go on making scales. The color doesn't change right away because we still have some lighter frosting left in the back. Here is our darker tint, a very beautiful transition. Making such scales is a great solution for those who have trouble covering the cake with Italian meringue cream. Scales are easier to make. It's time for the next tint. I put some frosting into the bowl. Add some cocoa powder. I stir it well and compare the new tint with the previous one. You see, it's not dark enough. These tints look absolutely the same. We need to make it a bit darker. Italian meringue cream doesn't really like cocoa powder, so you should stay it in carefully. We go on making scales. First we get our previous lighter tint and then it segues into darker tint. I mess up some of the scales, but it doesn't have a significant impact over the total look of the cake. We see the scales, we see the whole pattern. So let's not go crazy. If you fail to make an even bow or its edge curled up, don't scrape the whole ornament off. Just keep on going. Oh, I usually have such grimaces of hard work. I added quite a lot of cocoa powder. I have quite a dark rich tint in compression with the previous tint. I think it looks darker. I guess so. We don't need a very dark chocolate color anyway, 
You can also use brown food color instead of cocoa powder, by the way. Lower scales somehow get more opened, as if a cone is opening. Sometimes you make something unintentionally. You didn't plan it this way, and it turns out to be cool. Now I am cleaning the cake board. That's it. We have covered the cake using only natural products, no food colors. Even if you are going to use plain white frosting, you must stay it first. I put it into the bag. I take a drop of purple food color. I took quite a large drop, but we will use just a little to make a gentle tint. We put it into the bag as well. We already have two bags. We take a droplet of burgundy color and stay it in. This color is perfect for chrysanthemums. You can often see chrysanthemum in such shades, especially ones with white petals. To make this color deeper, we will also add some stripes. It's also quite common for chrysanthemums. We draw several lines starting from the piping tip. We already have three bags. The color of the flower centers will be a key factor in the perception of the cake and its color palette in general. Have a need to use natural shades. Yellow, green, orange, yellow. We can also use uh, ivory color. It looks very beautiful on some flowers. A drop of yellow color. I take this bright yellow color and put it into the bag. I don't have any piping tips in this bag. A drop of ivory color. We may not even use it. The way I see it now, it will look really cool. But we don't know how it will work with flowers. A drop of electric green. It will blend with our previous yellow and ivory tints and we will get just the bright yellow green shade we need. We take the same ball, it's our main helper. We add some electric green food color and we also add some ivory food color at once. Let's see what we will get. Not bad? Let's see how this color looks against our future flowers. I will add some green color. Chrysanthemums have bright, rich greenery. We also add either brown or black color. This way the greenery won't come to the force and put the flowers into the shade. Let's see. Let's put it against the cake as well. We have some darker shades here because we added some ivory color. It's a very gentle yellow-brown shade which made our greenery even more suitable for our cake. The greenery won't look unnatural on the cake. Our united team. Let's make a chrysanthemum. Also, keep in mind that it's easier to take a high flower of the flower nail. If you make a flat flower, it will be much more difficult to take it off the flower nail. So, first thing, we make a high base for the flower. Then we take the piping bag with yellow-green color and make a small hole in it. Make the hole as small as possible at first. Then you can make it bigger if necessary. It would be impossible to put off an inverse operation. We made a hole, everything looks fine. We start making sticks going toward the center. To make it work, you need to make sure the frosting sticks to the base first. We stick to the base, go up, 
stop pressing the piping back and tear the back off. This way you will get thin elongated lines. And I simply must ask you to make a small hole in the back. If you make a large hole, it will in no way make the process faster for you, but you will spoil all the prettiness of the flower. Making centers for the flowers is a very important part of decorating any cake. We collect the stamens in the center. We incline them towards the center, forming a cavity in the middle. Now we take white frosting and start making first petals. The first petals lie very close to the center, as if trying to cover it. We stick to the base, go up, stop pressing the back and remove the piping tip. We start the next row a bit lower. We stick to the base, go up and remove the piping tip. We go upwards, not sideways. We move yet lower for the next row and we start opening the petals a little as a matter of course. You simply can't do it in a different way, because you'll try to make the petals show from under the previous rows and the flower will start opening little by little. We start the next row at the very bottom and open the flower. This height allows you to make the flower lush. If you don't make a high base, you will be limited by the flower nail. Here we have no limits at all. We open the flower, making it wider. We open the flower throughout its height. Its opening becoming higher and higher volume. With Italian meringue cream we can even turn the flower upside down and it will still hold on the flower nail. So we can tilt the flower nail this way to make our work more convenient. I don't try to reach out and make a petal behind the flower. I simply tilt the flower towards myself. Please be aware that you need to place this high volume chrysanthemum onto the cake without breaking its petals. We need to have a platform for it on the cake. Some other flowers which will go with this quite a high volume chrysanthemum. In order to put it onto the cake without breaking its petals, we make a stack stand for it. We make a stack stand and then put our chrysanthemum onto it. We decorated a stack stand. We make the same high base for the bat. We make the center collecting stamens on the top. When making a bud, we do our best to cover the center with petals as much as possible. The center must be hidden under the petals. We go up and incline the petals towards the top. Then we can make some open petals without making the bud much wider. 
You can start them in the middle of the base. Just a slight hint that the flower is about to open. You can fit this bud carefully between the flowers. Such buds come very handy when you need to cover some open spots, maintaining the principles of minimalism. We make a base simply turning the flower nail. You can make it this way if it's more convenient for you. We are making a platform for the flower. We take yellow-green frosting again and assemble the center. This time we'll make it flatter. It looks like a little saucer with stamens radiating from the center. This chrysanthemum will be flatter. Now we make small petals around the center using a small star piping tape. Now we make first small petals around the center. The petals look absolutely different here, they look like elongated cones. We make petals in the second row longer. I don't look where I put the petal. I simply stretch the petals until they show from under the previous row. I cut into the base to make sure the petal sticks to it and make the petals longer with each row. We have reached larger, more solid petals. Let's see where we go from here. This chrysanthemum we made looks very much like filled daisies. I probably won't open it anymore at the bottom. Also, maybe we could Let's see, we can make it a bit fluffier, turning the petals down. Let's do it, let's make it fluffier. Now when it's so fluffy, we will need a stack stand for it. Let's make a bud for it. We make a smaller base this time. We make a center. Then we start making petals, inclining them towards the center. Here it is. It's reaching out, trying to cover the center. Look how beautiful they are on this side with these bright stripes. We need to make at least five buds like this, because they are going to be one of the most beautiful elements on our cake. 
This piping tip is perfect for making such closed compact flowers. We are making a center for our new chrysanthemum. This time we will make a more compact half open flower. We are going through all the stages of the flower blossoming. What do we do now? We make petals going up and inclining them toward the center, trying to cover it up. Oops, a petal came off. It looks very beautiful, doesn't it? Just like a real flower. So I noticed that the more you try to hide the center, the more interesting the flower looks. Only now, on our third or fourth row, we start making petals more upright. We start opening them a little. We open the flower little by little. If you noticed, all my chrysanthemums look a little ruffled. I simply can't make all the petals identical. It's true for all the flowers I make, actually. All the petals are different. In my opinion, chrysanthemums should be more leveled off and uniform. All the petals should look more or less identical. So people who can make identical petals, identical lines, who can maintain strict order, will be really good at making chrysanthemums. We made it halfway open and quite fluffy. It's only half open, but we made it quite fluffy on the sides, so we got quite a large flower in the end. Its center looks really cool. I like this flower much better than the open one. We have a cake and we have our chrysanthemums. First thing we should do is decide which side will be our front side, which side of the cake the client will look at. I like this part, it looks nice, it has lighter scales. I like this size, so I mark the back side at once with a short line. I don't think we will be able to cover the whole top with a cap of flowers. Also, it doesn't have to be very high and we will also add some greenery so it may still work. To make the cap higher, we put the rest of our frosting onto the top. It's been a while since we made the frosting, but we could still use it to make more flowers. I add some yellow-green frosting here as well. I put the least attractive flower on top, because we will cover it with other flowers later. I make a stack stand for the flower in order to place it 
nicely. I make sure it's pointed the way I need it. I remove the scissors carefully, moving backwards. I don't simply pull them out. I press them down first and then remove them carefully not to mess up the flower. Next we take our beautiful white flower. We try it on. It looks great here. Everything is fine. I put it onto the stack stand. We have already put three flowers onto the cake. I will put this flower right here. Let's not put a lilac chrysanthemum here, otherwise we will get a line of lilac flowers. We will put a white flower here instead. Another white flower. This is our interim result. Now we complete it with smaller flowers. Don't forget to leave some space where we can put leaves later. We start with the biggest flower we have left. Of course, we try to look at the cake from the side that we choose to be our front side. But this side may sometimes change, depending on how we distribute the flowers. I will put this flower here. I remove the scissors moving downwards. I have an opening left between the flowers here, so I remove the scissors this way. I really like putting flowers upon one another. It creates an effect of a lifelike bouquet. I also like changing their shape a little, pressing one flower against another one, because, again, it creates an effect of a real lifelike bouquet. I guess this will be our front side, so I put this flower here. Make sure your flowers don't look in one direction. They shouldn't look at the client, the birthday person who will receive the cake. We have two main characters here. This flower here is looking up, it isn't staring at us. These two flowers are on the spot. You will look at whichever you like best. This lilac flower with a beautiful center is looking the other way. Now we take our flower buds and decide where to place them. This bud will look very beautiful here, don't you think? A slightly open bud. How do we put it onto the cake? If we simply put it on top, we will crumple up these beautiful petals. The best variant is to do what our grannies used to do when feeding us with porridge. A plane is approaching, a docking mission. It gets as close to the petals as possible and then lands. We put it down and remove the scissors. It's like this flowers has always been there and all the petals are safe and sound. We find the best place for each bud. A white bud would look perfect here. It looks good here as well, but I think this is the perfect spot for it. The lilac bud looks beautiful as well, but it will blend in with the other flowers. Let's try pink one. It's a bit too small. I like the way the white bud looked here, a smaller white bud. 
this one, it's perfect. I carefully put it here in the center. Let's see where we can put the lilac bar. I think it will look very nice here. This flower looks a bit sunken. The bud isn't very large, so it will fit in perfectly well here. We put it right on top. It's looking up. Oh, it got stuck. I got stuck a little, so I freaked out, but I managed to set it straight. We fly up to the flowers, move the petals up a little and land. That's it. We made a more or less even circle. Now it looks round both on top and from the side. We all know that chrysanthemums have uneven leaves with somewhat wavy edges. So we do our best to make the leaves waver by moving the piping tip. Thanks to its subdued color, the greenery doesn't distract our intention from the flowers. And here you can see the white stuck stand we made for our flowers. I will not cover it with greenery, because I don't want my bouquet to be too heavy and look like a plastic cover. We want it to remain airy. The side of the cake, which we decorated with scales, looks a little bit like a basket. We perceive its color and this interweaving of scales as those of a basket. Once you take a closer look at it, you realize that it isn't a basket, but at the first sight it looks like a basket full of flowers. All your relatives will be swarmed with chrysanthemums. Women like to get into the bloomy bushes and say, take a picture of me. She gets into the bushes and says, take a picture of me. And you are like, uh, where are you? I can't see you. I hear. You look around and there she is in the bushes. We made a splendid cake today. I hope you liked it too. See you in our future videos.